Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and uh, in this video, I'm going to all talk all about uh, ocean chemistry changes and ocean temperature changes just off Bermuda. Now, Bermuda is a very small island sitting in the North Atlantic, well, mid to North Atlantic, um, and just off the island, they have this region they call the Bermuda Atlantic Time Series Study Site, or BATS, and they've been collecting data from ships there and sensors um, since 1983. So, so this um, peer-reviewed paper I'm going to talk about is in this journal Frontiers in Marine Science, and it discusses the results of 40 years of observations in this region. So let's see what's happened. So ocean physical and biogeochemical conditions have been rapidly changing over time. So 40 years of observations from 1983 to 2023 has been collected at BATS, the Bermuda Atlantic Time Series study site um, near Bermuda in the North Atlantic Ocean. And it shows continuing trends um, of surface warming, ocean surface warming, uh, an increase in ocean salinity at the surface, no surprise, because with warming, you get more evaporation, leaving the salt behind. Loss of dissolved oxygen, okay, DO. An increase in carbon dioxide, CO2, in, in the ocean. And of course, that's increased the ocean acidification. Um, and then there's other effects that come from that, these, these ocean acidification effects. So over this period of time, 1983 to 2023, the oceans warm by about one degree Celsius, which is a huge amount. It takes a lot of heat to warm the oceans. It's increased in salinity by 0 0.136. Uh, it's lost dissolved oxygen by about 6% or 12.5 micromoles per kilogram of water. Since, the 19, since 1983 also, ocean dissolved inorganic carbon, total alkalinity, a tracer of anthropogenic CO2, and the um, fraction and partial pressures of CO2 have continued to increase substantially. There's no evidence of a reduction in the rates of change over time. In fact, um, they're increasing, if anything. Contemporaneously, ocean pH has decreased by 0 0.1 pH units with ocean ac acidification. So there's more hydrogen ions. Basically, the um, hydrogen, those, con basically that this is representing, it doesn't seem much of 0 0.1 pH change, but this is a logarithmic scale. So that's a 30% increase in acidification. As a result, the saturation states of calcium carbonate minerals, both calcite saturation and aragonite saturation, have decreased. So there's less calcification. Um, the conditions for calcification are less favorable over the past 40 years because of the ocean acidification. Calcification is important for phytoplankton to build their shells. So. The updating of data and trends at the BAT site show how ocean chemistry of the 2020s is now outside the range observed in the 1980s. So this data is very useful for predicting the response of ocean chemistry in the marine ecosystems to shifting, um, future shifting earth and ocean conditions. Okay, so let's have a look at the, the data. Well, first of all, the map, the location. So we've got the Gulf Stream coming up here. We've got Bermuda here sitting in the middle, um, middle of, the, of the Atlantic Ocean. Um, and this is a, a blow up inset. So we've got the, Bermuda, the island here, very shallow reefs over this region, great scuba diving. Um, and you've got deeper water coming here. And this is the Hydro Station S site. And there's also a site called the BATS deployment area. It used to be this yellow circle. And then that was before 1994. After 1994, it was moved slightly to this orange circle. 
And this is a site where there's the OFD, the Ocean Flux Program, OFP rather, which is a program from 1978 to present where they, they, they go down and they trap deep ocean sediments to study them. Okay, that's at that site. Okay, so what did they find out? Well, let's go right down to the results. Okay, so this chart shows all of the parameter changes that they're measuring. This is at Hydrostation S. I showed you where that is on the map. And also at the BATS Hydrostation um, as well. Okay, so water temperature at the surface, it's increasing slope per year. It's changed almost, it's increased almost a full degree Celsius, which is a huge change because it takes tremendous amounts of energy to warm seawater compared to what is needed to warm the air. Because of the warming water, there's more evaporation, therefore there's more salt left behind. So the salinity at the ocean surface is increased 0 0.136 uh, units, practical salinity units. Dissolved oxygen has decreased. Um, dissolved inorganic carbon has increased. And uh, the total um, alkalinity has increased. <clears throat> um, and this, uh, this, is the, um, this is a proxy, a carbon tracer. It measures CO2 in the water, essentially lots more CO2 is dissolved in the water over this time period. Um, this, these are the, this is the fractional pressure, pressures, partial pressures of CO2. It's increased in the water. Um, the Revell, I always forget what this parameter is. The Revell factor, it describes how only a small fraction of the uh, partial pressure of CO2 is present in ocean water when much larger amounts are added to the atmosphere. It's basically the ratio, it's a buffer factor, the ratio of instantaneous change in carbon dioxide to the change in total dissolved inorganic carbon. Um, so uh, that's increased. The pH, of course, is dropping. That represents an increase in acidification of about 30%. As a result of the heavier, uh, the, 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 the more, the increase of acidification of the ocean by 30%, it's much harder for, uh, it's lower the saturation levels of calcite and aragonite. These are calcium carbonates. Um, and these are vital for building up the shells of phytoplankton. Okay, so that's the results. And now we can look at it in plots. So this is uh, what you see here is just as January through December, 1983 to 2023. Um, and the temperature scale is here. So you can see the oceans are, you know, cold from December, January, February, March, April, May, under 21 Celsius. And then they start warming up. This is a 25 Celsius band you know, May, June, and then July, you know, 28 Celsius. And then they peak at over 28 Celsius. This is on the surface in this region. You can see the band in, at which the temperatures are higher is widening, and it's also the temperatures are going up. So, okay, so this is very interesting data on how the temperature varies through, from, through the months of the year and also from through the years from 1983 to 2023. Same sort of thing with sal salinity. So the trends of the salinity are going up, basically lots of greens and some blues down to, you know, up to mostly yellows and some reds. Salinity is increasing. You see the variation through the year. This is dissolved oxygen. Dissolved oxygen is actually decreasing um, for, you know, it was higher, much higher in 83 and it's decreasing significantly for large, larger part over almost the whole year, basically. But you can see where it's really low in the summer months. Um, total alkalinity has actually uh, been increasing dissolved inorganic carbon has been increasing, you know, a lot more reds and yellows. 
Um, and this is the uh, tracer for CO2, and you can see how much CO2 has been absorbed in the surface, and you can see how it's predominantly there in the summer months when the water is warmer. Okay, so lots of CO2 going in. No wonder the ocean acidification is taking off. This is a temperature trend, 0.24 Celsius per decade. You know, from 1983 to 2023, four decades, it's 0.96 or 0.97 Celsius warmer, almost a full degree warmer. You can see the data points. This is the best fit line, salinity increasing and the dissolved oxygen decreasing. Okay, uh, you, uh, looking at some more curves, this is the total alkalinity is increasing, the dissolved inorganic carbon increasing, and the carbon tracer increasing significantly. Um, these are the some of the maps. Um, so January through December, eight, 1983 to 2023 again. This is the CO2 fraction. The Revell is increasing in general too. Um, the pH, of course, is uh, dropping. Okay, we're going, you know, we had pH greater than 8.14 parts of the year. This is uh, between, uh, this is uh, 8.1 is this band, this is 8.08. .08. So the green is between 8.08 .08 and 8.1 and eight, less than 8.01, a 30% increase in acidification in the ocean surface water. Seen mostly, it's, it's worse in, in the summer months. Carbonate ions decreasing, and the uh, you know the carbonates the the the, the saturations of calcite and aragonite, uh, two forms of carbon, of calcite of calcium carbonate, are also decreasing, and it's so it makes it much harder for phyt for plankton phytoplankton to form their shells. Um, this is the uh, CO2 uh, fraction, the Revell factor increasing. And the pH, how it's dropping, 0 0.018 per decade. Um, very significant drop. This is representing a 30% increase in acidification from 1983 to 2023. And the aragonite, it's, the saturation is decreasing. There's just, it's being it's being dissolved basically in the higher acidity. Okay, so so the chemistry, the, the ocean chemistry of the 2020s that we're seeing now is outside the range observed in the 1980s. Okay, there's, there's clearly long-term warming in the North Atlantic Ocean subtropical gyre where Bermuda is and global acceleration of ocean warming overall, the salinification of the subtropical, subtropical gyres continues, and that is a regional reflection of the long-term um, effects. Okay. Um, and yeah, basically um, that's the gist of it. So lots of interesting data here. Um, massive changes in the ocean chemistry and in the ocean uh, bio, ocean physical properties, and also in the biogeochemical conditions, the chemistry of the ocean. Huge changes, and we've got good records, long-term records. In fact, uh, the BATS uh, time series from Bermuda is the, it's the longest record of ocean measurement uh, that we that we have in the in the uh, in the Atlantic North Atlantic uh, region so it's you know it's excellent you know high quality data um, there's a Bermuda Institute of Ocean Sciences um, the B Bermuda Biological Institute of Sciences is located right in St. George's. I visited it. It's an amazing place. They're doing some, they're doing wonderful work on monitoring of the oceans off Bermuda. And uh, yeah, so, so thanks for listening. This is a very key paper on how the oceans are changing 
please consider going to my website, paulbeckwith.net, to don and donating at PayPal to support my research and videos and getting all of this important information out to you. Thanks again. Bye for now.